And while many in Washington don't want to face that simple fact, it is clear today the current president is taking Donald Trump at his words. Quote, we've known his plans all along. Joining me now for a lot more context on this news story, David Leopold, a former president of the American Immigration Lawyers Association, Democratic strategist Peter Emerson, who's advised two presidential transition teams, and Michael Skolnick, who covers civil rights and is the former editor-in-chief of Global Grind. David, what does this all mean? Well, I think uh, the president made the right move. Look, this program, NSEERS, what they call it, was outdated, it was inefficient. Um, but more importantly, it was a vestige of post-9-11 America, it racially profiled, and importantly, it didn't lead to the conviction of anybody who was connected to terrorism. What it did do was racially profile. It threw a lot of good people uh, into, into deportation proceedings, resulting in losses of, of scientists, businessmen, and women. Uh, Obama did the right thing today. This program had to be next. Peter, does this strike you as a direct rebuttal or prebuttal of what Donald Trump might have done with this program? To some degree, I want to make perfect note about uh, Attorney General Schneiderman of New York, who sent the letter yesterday. He should deserve great credit for prodding the president to do this. I agree that this should have been taken away a long time ago. There's no evidence that it had any effect other than harming people. So at the end of the day, I think Obama did the right thing, but I think he also did it for his own legacy, and he also did it to distance himself from uh, Trump. Uh, and David, take a little bit uh, more of a listen to Donald Trump, who, who comes off as either brief or evasive, whatever you want to call it, um, when he has had these interactions with reporters. He hasn't done a full press conference, which most president-elects do. Take a listen. Your comments about the uh, rocket attack in Berlin being against Christians, do you think that this might... Um, Say it again. Your, your, the attack in Berlin being against an attack against Christians? I think I, be, I believe you said it in a press release. So I'm wondering how this might affect relations with Muslims. It's an attack on humanity. That's what it is. It's an attack on humanity. And it's got to be stopped. David, do you get a sense there that these are the kind of comments that may have affected uh, President uh, Obama's thinking about how he wants to curtail some of the immigration options? Well, of course, I think it affected not only the president's thinking, but the, the hundreds of, uh, of activists that, that contacted the president, the 350,000 Americans that signed a petition asking the president to revoke this outdated racial profiling program. Look. Um, you know, there's an important article, I think, for everybody to read in light of Trump's election. It was written by Masha Gessen and published in the New York Review of Books. It call, it's called Autocracy Rules of, for Survival. And I think the big point there is that you've got to take Donald Trump at his word. I know that he goes back and forth. I know that he's evasive. Uh, he, he doesn't take responsibility for anything he says. But let's face it, he's called for a total ban on Muslims. He's called for a registry. Um, he broad brushes a horrific attack. He takes, he takes credit for being smart. He sees it only in terms of himself. When you, when you watch a horrible terrorist attack, his only reaction is, yeah, well, I told you so. I'm so smart. This is a man who has said he ran on a platform of, of bigotry, of racism, and, and xenophobia, and nativism. And he wants, to, uh, he wants to end immigration. He also talks about banning Muslims. He talks about banning people based on their religion. It's, it's absolutely inconceivable. And I think President Sorry Obama... If I can. I think President Obama did the right thing by making this much more difficult for, for Donald Trump if he chooses I, to try and register people. Peter, go ahead. I, I don't think there's any difficulty for Donald Trump to do whatever he wants, although this program's curtailed. There are other ways to accomplish what Trump may or may not want to. I don't take him at his word. I take him at his action. So I want to wait and see exactly what he does, because as you pointed out, Ari, if we take him at his word, we're going to all become schizophrenic if we haven't well, already. I, I got I to push back against that a little bit. He is the president-elect of the United States, and his word is all we have. He, he, the things that he said during that campaign, the racism, 
uh, the, the calling for total ban on Muslims. He hasn't backed off. Well, you let, me, and let me bring in Michael Skolnick, who's also yeah, with it, us it, here. It, let me just bring in Michael. The headline we have on the screen, Michael, is Obama blocks potential Muslim registry. This program, this registry, hadn't even been actively used in several years, okay? For folks who look at that, who folks who are involved in national security know that. The president knows that because he's in the daily briefings. He oversees this. You know who's taking Donald Trump at his word right now? It appears to be today, the news tonight, President Obama. He didn't want to leave this on the table. That means he sees some probability. It may not be 90 percent, but it's not zero, I think, in the president's mind that this was an issue. And I think the president should take him at his word. I, I think the country, this country has history, right? Japanese internment camps. We have a history of rounding right. people up. And certainly there are Muslims across this country who are definitely desperately afraid of this president-elect and what he's going to do to them. And President Obama did the right thing to protect those Americans who are living in this country who practice the religion of Islam. At the same time, you watch that video, there's a man lurking over President-elect Trump's uh, shoulder, mm -hmm. and it's General Michael Flynn as his NSA advisor. And General Michael Flynn has made tremendous inflammatory remarks against Muslims. That's the person who is advising him. So it's not just President-elect Trump who we're afraid of when it comes to Muslims. It's his entire Steve Bannon. Michael Flynn, these right, gentlemen you're saying have made, right there what we're seeing. You Michael see Michael Flynn, Flynn right over, the left over his shoulder. This man has made some really horrible statements against Muslims, and he is the one who's advising the president on national security issues. Also, to note, Ari, N. Sears has not led to one terrorist conviction since its inception. Right, right. Not one. So it does not work. It has not worked. And President Obama did the right thing today. Peter, go ahead. You wanted to respond. And, 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 I just don't want any viewers to think for a moment that the issue is dead. It's not. Obama did the right thing. This program's been curtailed. But as it's been pointed out with Trump himself and his advisors, this could be revisited and no doubt will be. So we have to be very vigilant. I would agree with Peter, and I also think one thing we should remember in, in these days and times, there is more ways to get information than just through the United States government. We are inputting so much information to private companies. So I also think it's important that private companies do not cooperate with this president-elect if he goes to them and asks them to deliver information on what religion a person might be. Uh, and so, David, point, when you... Go ahead, David. No, I was just going to make the point that the only discernible reason to have kept... NSEERS in place would be racial profiling because, as was just pointed out, uh, the technology has changed so much since this registry program was put into effect just post 9-11 that we, it, it, it's obsolete. In other words, there's other ways that Customs and Border Protection can protect the country, whether it's through flight manifests, whether it's through travel patterns, things like that. Uh, this program is useless, and the only reason people like Chris Kobach the, the nativist lawyer from, from Kansas, the only reason people like that want a program like this in, in place is so that they can easily go and register people based on their religion. And I agree that this is not over, but I think the, the taking this off the regulatory books uh, does two things. It, it, it's a statement that the American people do not have to put up with racial profiling by a president, number one, and number two, that uh, it's going to make it much harder for uh, Chris Kobach or, or, or President-elect Trump to, to put a, a new registration program in place because they're going to have to go through the regulatory procedures. Right, and I think you're, you're making a point just... that's usually, we're, we're out of time, Peter, but the final point is important. It seems obscure, but under administrative agency law now, if they want to revive anything like this, there are actually federal rules. There will be a paper trail. We would, as a public, know about it uh, before it was even implemented. That's one of the changes that is required now from what President Obama did today. Uh, as I say, we're out of time on this topic. David Leopold and Peter Emerson, thank you. Michael, I'll see you later in the show. We've got a lot of other news, though, much more, including the new evidence trickling out that the Russian military was behind the DNC email hack and it's been a minute since Newt Gingrich challenged Donald Trump and it took only a few minutes for him to walk it back today. I want to report that I made a big boo-boo. I goofed. Draining the swamp is in. The alligators should be worried. Ace is the place with the helpful